Hey y'all, it's Bridget Moses from Vincent and Bridget Moses Godly Encouragement here with some Godly Encouragement for you. Today we are talking about submission. Yes, you heard it right. Submission. The whole concept of submission offends our flesh. Let's just be real. Both men or women and men alike do not like the idea of submission. It's our carnal and fleshly nature that causes us to want to run stuff ourselves. We think that we know what we need and want and the best way for us to get there. Submission isn't a dirty word though. When we truly begin to understand submission, when we choose to become subject to the mission, as I've heard it said, we can actually arrive at our desired destination more, much more quickly and with much less strain and error. Who wouldn't want that? In order to do this, though, we need to first ask for God's help and then submit ourselves and our limited understanding to the one who wrote the book. How awesome is it that we have access through the blood of Jesus to go straight to the source of all wisdom and the one that sees and knows everything. How much wasted time and effort can be averted by doing so? A lot. The only thing we need to do in order to receive that help is to die to ourselves, Die to the way that we've learned to function. Ask yourself like I did, how's that working out for you? How is your life working out for you right now? Is it working out for you the way you want it to? Um, Because God's ways, they offend our flesh. Um, They are not our natural bent, but they work every time. Every time they work every single time. So we just don't want to do it though. To be real, we just don't want to do it. We don't want to do things God's way. We think we know the way to do it. We think we can um, manipulate and, and, and negotiate to do it closer to our way. But until we do it God's way, he's gracious and merciful. And he allows us to retake the test as many times as needed to pass. And I'm saying ouch too. Like there's no condemnation for me because I do, I'm doing this right now. God has been working on me in some areas that I have been struggling with for a while. And I continue to try to uh, bargain and negotiate. And I'm like, well, I'll do it halfway. Partial disobedience is still disobedience. Um, you can't, or partial obedience is still disobedience. When God tells us to do something a specific way, it's for our good, not his. It's because he wants to bless us. But if we continue to do things the same way we've always done them, well, then we'll just continue to get what we've always gotten. We can't go into the new thing he has for us doing old things, um, functioning in old behavior. And sometimes God just has to really kind of, you know, let the consequences of our actions kind of build up until we cry mercy and we're like, okay, I'll do it your way now. When if we were just promptly obedient in the first place, if we submitted to the way he said it to begin with, we could have avoided so many problems. Yeah, if you can't say amen, say ouch. And I am saying ouch myself. I love it when he preaches to me out of my own mouth. He gets me the message I need through my lips. That says a lot. It says, first of all, how I have nothing to do with the message he's, or little to do with the message he's uh, brought forth through me. Because if I'm learning something from it, it's not coming from me. And that's exactly where we need to be. And I love it when he speaks to me through me because I get to hear it. I get, I need this message just as much as y'all do. 
I, we all need God's word so much. And faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And he'll get us that message, even if it's through our own mouth to others. How awesome is it that we have access through the blood of Jesus to go straight to the source of all wisdom and the one who sees and knows everything? How much wasted time and effort can be averted by doing so? The only thing we need to do in order to receive that help is to die to ourself. This bears repeating. Die to the way we've learned to function. Ask yourself like I did, how's that working out for you? Die to our own understanding. Die to our need to control the outcome, the steps we take on the way, and our preference of timing. God has a habit of doing more than we can think or imagine. So we can relax and trust his method and process of getting us there. Whoo! <laughs> yeah, we can. We can, and, and we all need the reminders. Me today, especially. When we submit to God and his way, we can experience what God can accomplish. When we stay stiff-necked and unteachable, we're stuck with only what we can do in our own strength and knowledge. And maintaining it, I'd like to add. I don't apply this perfectly myself every time. No. But I do know which one I'd rather have. And I have learned some lessons in submission. I used to be extremely rebellious. Extremely. I used to have a huge problem with authority. Um... I used to be very disrespectful um, to anyone in authority um, because they had wronged me. I had uh, not everybody in authority, um, but the ones that did kind of took up my mental real estate. You know, when you lose your virginity by being raped and the police officer accuses you of lying because you can't find where it happened because you had walked through so many buildings downtown St. Paul and threatens to take you to jail because you're wasting their time, kind of makes it difficult. When that same officer, when they wouldn't let my mother, and it was my mother's birthday, they wouldn't let my mother to come into the room. I had never had a physical exam, a lady exam, and they had to do the rape kit and they wouldn't let my mother in the room, but they let that cop that threatened to take me to jail in the room, a male cop, and the room, it was a teaching hospital, so the room was filled with students and like student nurses, student lab techs. Like it was like this big thing and I had never had an exam before and they let that cop in there, but not my mother? Yeah, I had a problem with authority. When I had something happen to me um, and the police promised me they wouldn't take me back there and they did, yeah, they did anyways. And they left me there and they promised me they wouldn't. And then I start medicating with alcohol for the first time, drank for the first time. And um, there was this girl that didn't like me because she wanted my boyfriend. And so she gave me her alcohol too. And we were drinking uh, malt liquor, we were drinking 40s. And I got almost got uh, alcohol poisoning. And she had pushed me down 26 stairs in the cold, in the winter, middle of winter when I was just wearing a sweatsuit and left me on the, on the sidewalk. And then they came, somebody came, picked me up and dropped me on the kitchen floor from his 6'4 self. And then the cops came and were kicking me, telling me to get up. And they yanked me up and it was the same cop. And then he said some smart stuff. Yeah, I'd have an issue with that. When I reported another rape, when I was in treatment, 
they forced me to report another rape that had happened. And that cop came and asked me some inappropriate questions, didn't ask me anything about the case, about the rape whatsoever, just asked me if my mom looked like me. And when I said yes, people say we look a lot alike. He said, oh good, I'll go talk to her in person then. And asked me if I had ever um, done specific things and did I enjoy it. And didn't ask me nothing about the rape. The same cop, that, uh, the same sergeant that helped with the first rape. Yeah, I'd have a problem with authority. So I didn't like submission. And I had every... Right. Oh, another time I got picked up and slammed head first into the sidewalk and called 911 because I thank God I had my phone in my hand I, when cell phones first came out and I landed on my phone like this. God's grace. I couldn't move and I felt stuff running out my nose. I didn't know if my neck was broken or what. I called the police and I was laying on a busy street and no police came. I laid there for I don't even know how long. Finally, I had to call a taxi. And as I was waiting for the taxi, they, uh, some van came and he helped me up. And he, I said, I didn't want to sit in his van. I said, no offense, but, um, you know, I just had this happen to me. I really don't want to sit in anybody's van that I don't know. And he let me stand outside and waited for the taxi with me. When the taxi got there, I went back and called the police and asked them why they didn't send a cop car. And they said, oh, it says here that one was sent out seven minutes after you called. And I said, there's no way. I had platinum blonde hair at the time. I was wearing uh, light tan pants in the middle of winter. I had a bright red puffy jacket on. There's no way I wouldn't have been seen. I was laying right by the street. Then nobody came. And so I had an issue with authority. And understandably so, right? So submission was difficult for me. And it still is at times. Trusting to submit to somebody else and allowing them to lead you when you have been seriously wronged like that, it's tough sometimes. But God can be trusted at all times. We can be subject to his mission. We can know that he doesn't have any ulterior motives. He doesn't have a hidden agenda. He doesn't have some, some, uh, you know, alternate, alternate, you know, objective. When he tells us to do something, it's for us. It's for our good. It's for our help. It's not for, for anything other than that. And God can be trusted. There is no evil in him, no shadow of turning in him. He is not like, you know, some dirty cop or some, you know, abusive person. He can be trusted. He can be fully trusted So we can be subject to his mission, submission. I've heard it said like that. I think it was T.D. Jakes that said that. Um, And that was powerful. When I heard it said like that, it helped me to understand it a lot better. Because when you hear submit, you hear it in a negative connotation most times. And... um, And people have abused it, so that's why we do. Um, But when I heard it, it described as being subject to the mission, being subject to somebody else's mission. And like God says, uh, when you're faithful with another man's vision, he'll give you your own. So we have to learn to be subject to the mission, to submit. And let God, even if, even if you end up submitting to whoever is over you and they abuse their, their authority, God's going to deal with them. God will deal with them. Because we need to submit to God and we need to submit to man. And if they mess up, God has got that. 
So when we're not trusting to submit to a human and be subject to their mission, we're not trusting that God is going to handle it. We're thinking that he's not going to. So that's a distrust of God too. Whew, let's go to the scriptures, y'all. What does the Bible say? I uh, John 15, 1 through 17. I'm only going to read this once. Um, the verses will be in the description box below. I'm the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean. Already you are clean. Because of the word I have spoken to you, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he's thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. As the father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. We are friends of God when we do what he commands us. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit that you should, uh, and that your fruit should abide or remain, some say, some vers versions say, so that whatever you ask, ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you so that you will love one another. That is John 15, 1 through 17 in the ESV. I'm just going to read through my, um, my verses, uh, the scriptures, uh, once today, but they will all be in the description box below. Second Chronicles 30 verse 8 in this ESV says, Do not now be stiff-necked as your fathers were, but yield yourselves to the Lord and come to his sanctuary, which, had, which he has consecrated forever, and serve the Lord your God, that his fierce anger may turn away from you. That was Second Chronicles 38, uh, 30 verse 8 in the ESV. Romans 12, 2 in the ESV, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable, and perfect. Romans 12, 2 in the ESV. Malachi 2, 2 in the ESV, if you will not listen, if you will not take it to heart to give honor to my name, says the Lord of hosts, then I will send the curse upon you and I will curse your blessings. Indeed, I have already cursed them because you do not lay it to heart. That is Malachi 2.2 2 in the ESV. Jeremiah 32 uh, verse 33 in the ESV says, They have turned to me their back and not their face. And though I have taught them persistently, they have not listened to receive instruction. Isaiah 30.15 in the ESV says, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust shall be your strength. But you were unwilling. In returning and rest you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust shall be your strength. But you were unwilling. That's Isaiah 30 uh, verse 15. Matthew 26, 41 and 42 in the NIV says, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, my father, Jesus did, my father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. That's him in the garden of Gethsemane, Gethsemane when he was um, about to go to the cross. John 15 Verse 7 in the ESV says, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. 
Psalm 91 verse 1 in the ESV, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. We have to dwell in the shelter of the Most High, though. And we do that by staying in His presence, doing His words. Matthew 6.10 in the ESV, Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Ephesians 5.21 in the ESV says, Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. James 4, chapter 4, verses 6 and 7 in the ESV says, But he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Um, lots of people think that it's just resist the devil, and he will flee from you. No, first you have to submit yourself to God first which means when he tells us to do something, we need to do it. Otherwise, we're opening a door for the enemy to come in. Whoo-wee, what a great reminder that is. 2 Corinthians 9, verse 13 in the ESV says, By their approval of this service, they will glorify God because of your submission that comes from your confession of the gospel of Christ and the generosity of your contribution for them and for all others. That's 2 Corinthians 9.13 in the ESV. You know, there's a lot of things in the Bible that bother us that we don't want to do because they're uncomfortable. Um, we don't want to do them because it's frustrating. We don't want to do them because it's, <laughs> it's not what we really uh, want to do. So will we do it? Are we going to lean to our own understanding? Sorry, my hair's kind of crazy today. Are we going to lean to our own understanding? Are we going to think we know more than God? We know better than God? Because whether we like to admit it or not, when we refuse to do what he's telling us to do, we're saying we know better than him. We're saying we know more than him. We're saying that we know what to do more than he does. Ouch. Will we be subject to his mission? Will we submit? Or will we be stiff-necked and die outside of the promised land because we refuse to? God is never trying to... He never gets anything from that. God can use anybody else to teach his word. He can, you know, he made a donkey speak. Jesus said, if you refuse to praise, the rocks will cry out. God doesn't need us. He chooses us. Will we trust him enough? And I'm asking myself this too. Will we trust him enough to let go? to take that step, even if it's in a direction that's uncomfortable for a season. And I'll just be transparent with what he's been dealing with me with. Um, and he's been dealing me with me on, um, sorry, I had to pray really quick about if I should disclose uh, these things or not. So he's been working with me on my eating, like I've said in past videos. Um, I have been running to food for comfort instead of God, which is idolatry. It's idolatry. Um, it's me not trusting God right now um, because he hasn't moved in my timing. Ooh, I'm just figuring this all. He's given this all to me as I'm talking. Glory to God. I haven't been trusting him because he. I've felt discouraged. I've been believing for a house for three years. Um you know, me, my husband, and my kiddo live in a little one-bedroom apartment. And he, my kid, our kiddo is one and a half almost. He'll be one and a half on the first. So the space is getting cramped, you know. And I'm not trusting God because it hadn't happened in my timing. So, and he just revealed to me right now that I'm not trusting him. I thought I was trusting him. But I realize now through him talking through me that I'm not. And that's okay. And you know what? I'm going to give y'all an example, an active example right now of how to deal with that. 
God, I repent of not trusting you. I receive your forgiveness, and I most definitely receive you cleansing me of all unrighteousness, and I thank you, God, for doing so. Thank you, God, for purifying my heart and my soul and my hands, Lord. Help me to serve you more readily. Give me a readily servant, a heart that's ready to serve. Help me to not lean to my own understanding as I have been doing. I receive your help, Lord. And I see that you've been trying to help me for so long. And I receive it. And I thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. The other area that he really spoke to me through this (laughs) whole message, and excuse the tears, but process, right? He helped me to understand that, oh, sorry. He's been working on me on submitting to my husband. My husband is a wonderful man. But because of my distrust of men in general, because of how much they've hurt me. Sorry. And because I'm not trusting God, this is all just coming to me right now. My eyes just opened through this video and I'm so grateful. But I have been hard-headed and stiff-necked and not trusting my husband and not trusting God with my husband. I've been prideful. I've been wanting to do things my own way. Because I know God so well. This is ugliness. Ugliness. And I have no problem revealing it. Because like I say every time, God cannot help us heal what we won't reveal, what we refuse to reveal. And my transparency will help others. I don't care about what people think about me. And any part of me that does, God will deal with that. I care more about helping y'all. And if y'all got to see me, uh, you know, get checked right in the middle of a lesson, that's what needs to happen. Because that is what you get to see. You get to see how to walk it out for yourself. Sorry. But God helped me to understand through this video (laughs) that I'm not trusting him. And I'm not trusting my husband. And why? Why it's been harder for me to submit. I knew it, but I didn't know it, if that makes sense. I didn't know it like I see it now. And my husband is a wonderful, godly man who has a heart for Jesus unlike anyone else I've ever seen. And he has been such a safe place for me to walk this all out. And he's been exceedingly patient as God has worked on me and in me. And if there's any man on the planet that I can safely submit to, it's my husband. But it's pride. It's pride. It's that carnal fleshly nature that gets us to think we know better or, you know, we know more in a certain area or, you know, we know how, what to do. There's, God is a God of order. God is a God of order and authority. To be honest, I wanted my husband to submit to my mission. My mission is God's mission, but God didn't set it up that way. He set it up that we submit to our husbands in all things. Now, if we don't like that, we take it up with God. He's the one that created the order. It's not because we're less than. It's not because we um, don't have what it takes to know what to do. 
it's because he has created this order for a reason. We can say how we feel about something and then we back off and we say it respectfully in a honoring and respectful way to our husbands. But they're the ones that make the ultimate decision and they're the ones that also are held accountable for the decisions made for the household. And it is not right. We need to trust God as women. We need to trust God that he will work it out. If the way we think things should be done is better, then God will work on our husband's heart. We're not trusting God to work on our husband's heart. We're thinking we got to be God. We got to take things into our own hands. Because if we don't, nobody's going to take care of us. And that's another area that I've had to work. God's had to work in me a lot. Is being so independent. Because I had to. I had to take. I had to look out for me. Because at that time, I didn't feel like anybody else was. But sometimes we do that so much that we're, we put ourselves on the throne. And we won't allow God to take care of us. And if we are stiff-necked and unteachable, God has to just allow us to go until we cry out to him. Because he will not force his will will on us. We have to receive it. We have to submit to it. All right, y'all. Thank you for joining me on this lesson to me. (laughs) Hopefully it's helped you as well. Talk to you next time. Love you.